I'm sure all of you would have seen a patient with a colostomy, and if you come to our surgery ward right now, you probably will see three or four patients who are having a colostomy. Now, if you look at the program, the name of the, the title of my talk is Care of Colostomy, but I have changed it to Care of Patients with Living with a Colostomy because the colostomy has impacts on the psychosocial uh, image of the patient. So, let's get on with it. Now, what is a stoma? A stoma comes from the Greek word which means mouth or opening. So if it's a colostomy, it is an opening which is uh, derived from the colon. An ileostomy, well, it's derived from the small intestine, that is the ileum. A jejunostomy from the jejunum. And so as the name goes, according to the name of the intestine, the stoma is called. So an ostomy may be permanent or it may be temporary. Permanent as in the case of distal uh, cancers of the rectum and the colon, where the intestine has to be removed and the anal sphincter is not working anymore, it's removed, and so there is no control of bowel function. The stoma that is created hence becomes permanent, and the patient has to live with it the rest of his life. But in cases where you create a stoma just for diversion of feces, and then later at a certain period of time, maybe three to six months down the line when the patient's condition improves, you can reverse the colostomy and patient can have a normal bowel movement just like a, he had before. So, ileostomy, colostomy, and... Uh, these are all surgically created opening. So urostomy is also there. Here it is um, basically is diversion of the urine in cases of some urological diseases where the bladder is removed and you don't have any more bladder. They use a little bit of the small intestine, that is the ileum, and they call it a conduit. And this conduit functions like a, like a new urinary bladder. And the urine comes out from the, uh, on the opening in the skin. Now the problem with this is that Colostomy or any ileostomy can be life-changing. A patient who has had a cancer or a patient with a sudden trauma comes to the op uh, hospital and then you realize that in the operation, the only way to save the patient is to do, is to create a colostomy. But then what happened? Yes, the life is saved. But then after you have the colostomy, the patient's life is changed because he will not feel like a normal individual anymore. Socially, he will not be acceptable. He feels there is some kind of a stigma. He cannot go to a party because he has a stoma bag which is making some gurgling sound. And he doesn't know when he has to go to the toilet to empty that bag. You know? So there are so many things. And then there's always the smell of feces that comes out of the stoma. So all these adjustments make the patient have some kind of anxiety, depression. And also, having a colostomy bag can lead to complications in that area. Because it's not a normal anatomy. So then, what are the type of colostomies? What well, a type of ostomies we say? Colostomy here you have from the colon, ileostomy from the ileum, and urostomy is well from the ureters. If you can see that blue, somewhere over there, that is the ileal conduit. It is a part of the small intestine which is used to reconstruct the bladder. The bladder has been removed, and the ureters are draining into that ileal conduit. And this over here, the red thing, that is coming out onto the skin. So why do we create a colostomy? A colostomy is made when stool needs to be diverted. Suppose a patient has got stricture of the intestine, that means the constriction. Stool cannot pass and he comes to the emergency with acute obstruction of the intestines. Operation that has to be done is a colostomy. When the patient has got a cancer and that mass, the tumor mass is blocking the intestine, the stool is not able to pass, you have to do a colostomy. Or patient has got a trauma and the patient is too sick, you cannot repair and join the intestines, then you have to do a colostomy in that case. Or if you have cut the diseased bowel and you don't want to expose the freshly joined part of the bowel to the feces, then you also do a colostomy. So it can be permanent or it can be temporary as the case may be. So these are the reasons that uh, a colostomy is uh, created. Colorectal cancers, bladder cancers, Crohn's disease, inflammatory conditions, and then birth defects, even children's and infants also have an ileostomy, and other intestinal and urinary medical conditions, or even in the case of setting of trauma. So now the types of colostomy, this, uh, the picture on the left side shows a normal human gastrointestinal anatomy, and you have right from the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, then you have the small intestines, and here we are interested in this segment of the bowel, which is called as the colon. Now if you have a problem here, if you have a problem here, Let's imagine this part is affected by cancer. This has to be cut. 
So what happened? This small intestine, this small intestine ileum is opening into the cecum and into the ascending colon. But this is affected by cancer. This has to be cut. When this is cut, this ileum is joined over there and this is produced, is brought outside onto the skin. So what happened? The patient eats, the food travels through the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and then it goes into the, and then it goes to the colon and then it comes out from there. So this is called ascending ileostomy because this part of the intestine is called the ascending colon. Now you have transverse colostomy. Transverse colostomy is here. This part is removed. And you have the transverse, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This part is removed. This part is affected. The patient is not able to pass stool. So the food comes from the small intestines, enters into the ascending colon, and then it comes out from here. Now this is a transverse colon. The stool comes out from here because this part, which is shown in dotted lines, is a segment of the intestine that is removed. Now this is the descending colon. This is a sigmoid colon, and this is rectum. Now if we have to remove this part of the intestine, the stool will have to come out somewhere, somewhere around here. Now, when this part, when the rectum has been removed, this sigmoid colon is brought outside and this is called a sigmoid colostomy. So depending upon the location, the segment of bowel that the stoma is made, the name also is derived from there. Now you have the colostomy sites like we have just, I'm just showing you a different picture of what we already discussed. Then here is the ascending colostomy. It will pop out on the skin like this, it will look red. And here is the transverse colostomy, here is the descending colostomy, and this one is a sigmoid colostomy. Now the best, the, uh, the, the thing about that is that you see the colon absorbs a lot of water and electrolytes. So you can expect that the stool that comes out from here has not be, been completely absorbed of water, so it is much watery. So <clears throat> you have an ascending colostomy, the type of stool that will come out with, will be much more watery and difficult to control and it will spill and then it will touch the surrounding skin. If you have a transverse colostomy, if the patient with a transverse colostomy, the, the, the fecal matter that comes out is more or less well formed, but still it is mushy. And then that also can cause some excoriation, some ulceration of the, peri, of the peristoma skin. Now descending colostomy and sigmoid colostomy, most of the water and the electrolytes have been absorbed and the fecal matter that comes out from these two stomas are more or less like in a normal individual. So loop versus end colostomy, I'm just telling you a little bit of theory. It's not really necessary over here, but then see this is one end of the bowel that has been brought outside. That has, you have the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the muscle, and this is the colon. This is the end which is open. The stool comes out from here. And when it's fixed to the skin, it's inverted. And then you can see the mucosa is red. And here is the, and this is the orifice that the, intest, that the fecal matter will come out. And the bag, that is the pouching system that will be connected, will sit somewhere around this area. So this surrounding area where the mucus, uh, mucosa of the colon is just touching the skin, also called as the mucocutaneous junction, this is the part which has got the highest risk because the stool or the watery contents that comes out from the intestine is going to contaminate. And we all know that these um, intestinal fluids, they all contain juices, gastric juice, they contain bile, they contain pancreatic juice, and they have very strong digestive power, so they can even digest the surrounding of the skin. Now here you have two openings. You see both the loops of the intestine I brought outside. This is called as a loop colostomy. So fecal matter will come out of one, and the other will, nothing will be coming out except for some mucus. Now there are different situations why we make this. I mean the discussion for that is beyond the scope of this class, of this lecture, so we will not talk much about that. Now what is the prevalence and impact of living with a colostomy? So many people, I'm, uh, these are Western data, we don't have data from India, but 1.3 million to almost 2 million people around the world have an ostomy, whether it is a colostomy, an ileostomy, or urostomy. A colostomy can be life-changing, like I said in the beginning, but also it can be, it can be life-saving, but also it is life-changing. Now living with an ostomy changes the physical, emotional, well-being, and require lifestyle adjustments, like diets, they may have to adjust, wearing clothes, they may have to adjust, taking bath, have to adjust, traveling, they have to adjust. It brings a lot of implications on normal daily activities. The most common problem that we encounter in patients with a colostomy is the, the peristomal related complications. That means the complications that happens around the stoma site. Now let's look at what those are. Up to 20, the range is very big, depending upon the centers of care. If you have a poor center of care, then you have a, a huge number of 
patients coming with complications, if it's a good, in the hands of good caregivers, then the complication rate is much less. So the range is very wide, from 20% to 71% of persons with an ostomy, they can experience leakage, ulceration of the skin around the stoma, bleeding, stomal ischemia, that is the, the, the stoma is too edematous and there's no blood supply, and it can retract backwards, the stoma can prolapse outwards like a hernia, or that can be blocked. Now, peristomal skin complications can affect up to one-third of patients with colostomy and two-thirds of patients with urostomy or ileostomy. Why is the question? We have already talked that the effluence, that is the content that comes out from an ileostomy, is very much watery, difficult to control, and so it comes in contact much easier with the skin. Whereas the colostomy effluent, it's, much, it's, uh, it's, it's more thicker, it's like well-formed stool, so it doesn't really contaminate. It really doesn't come in contact. It's easier to control. So other problems are there, which is the incidence of hernia. Incidence of hernia, the, the, the site the, around, the, around the colostomy becomes very weak, and then you can have some bowels coming into that. Now, a parastomal hernia develops when loops of intestine protrude through the abdominal muscle, creating a bulge. I will show you some pictures. Now, stomal complications. I'm sorry if the, if the pictures look a little gory to you, but then in real life it can be worse. Now here, you have a stoma right here which is functioning, but then if you look around, there is a big bulge over here. The reason being, there is a weakness. You have created a stoma here, but then this area has become weak and this loop of intestine has gone around there and caused this bulge. This is a parastomal hernia. This intestine is herniating into there, and if this becomes very big, much of the intestine will go there and become twisted and is going to become obstruction. Now the next thing is this peristomal uh, skin excoriation. You see there is a stoma here, and I'm sure because of the leakage of that, um, of uh, leakage of watery stool, which is contaminating the skin, you have skin excoriation. Now this is very difficult to manage. It is very painful for the patients as well. So this is a type of parastomal hernia, and here you have a stoma. But actually instead of popping out like this and making it easier for the bag to fit, it has gone inside. It has retracted inside. So stool will come out and then it will just flow around this area and it's very difficult to trap it. Now one over here is stoma ischemia. You can see it has become black. Probably when this, this is probably in the immediate post-operative period, maybe at the time of making the stoma, the blood supply, this, this, uh, there was too much tension on the, vessel, on the, on the intestine and then there is compromise of uh, blood supply. So here the stoma is actually becoming black. This is called stomal ischemia. If you see here, the tissue is already dead, undergone gangrene, this is stomal necrosis. There is no way to save this, but to refashion and get another operation done. Now this is a stoma in which it was created for a case of cancer. In the long term, probably this patient had survived with the stoma, but there is cancer recurrence, and the cancer has recurred at the site of the stoma. This is tumor. Here, you have, the stoma is like this earlier, but then what happened, it has retracted and it has become stenose. It has become only a pipe, only a small a rails tube probably could go in there. Now these are the type of complications. Here you have, the, you can still see the sutures that are there. This is the mucosa of the colon and this is the skin, but it has become detached from it, <clears throat> probably due to infection. And here in this case, from the stoma, the whole intestine has prolapsed outside. So these are the type of peristomal complications that we get to see. They are not so life-threatening until unless it's bleeding, until unless it is obstructed. Now we have a lot of ostomy appliances that are there. These are the, mm, the bags, and you have a one-piece system, a two-piece system, and this is a face plate. This is how it looks like, and these are the kits. These are much cheaper varieties which we, are, which we get in our ward supply. Now I'm just showing some kinds of uh, tubes. Well, we didn't, don't have time to talk about gastrostomy here. Now this is a one end and you have a two end piece. Now the face plate, the one end, the whole thing is attached to the stoma. In the two piece you have this base plate which fits there and this one, comes, the, the pouch comes and attaches it over there. Now care of the stoma side, managing skin irritation is very difficult because the stool and water that comes irritates it. <clears throat> this feels like a burning sensation. Why? Because we told that gastric juice pancreatic juice and bile, which are lots in amount, they can irritate the skin. So if the skin is irritated, we have to keep the patient nil per oral and keep the patient on rail strip suction so that the amount of fluid that goes into the stoma is less. And if the patient has been kept nil per oral, then you have to give nutrition in the form of total parental nutrition. 
Now these are some uh, peristomal barriers. You have this is karaya paste, it's called karaya paste, so that the effluent from here doesn't touch the skin. This is a dusting powder, this is a, uh, this is a paste, and this is a dusting powder which can absorb a lot of moisture so that the skin over there is dry and is, gets uh, allowed to heal. Now this is something which you will not find anywhere else, but you will see only in nigrims. We have some we device something over the skin of the patient when it's excoriated, we use aluminum paint. This acts as a barrier and anything that comes from here is waterproof and sealed and doesn't come in contact with the, uh, with the skin. Now how to remove the pouch? Actually every pouch comes with an instruction on how to remove them. So these are the care, remove the pouch and then fit it again and you have to cut to size the, the flanges and um, <coughs> Attach the patch to the pouch. I'll show you in the next slide. We'll just show that. So empty the pouch when it's one third or full because if it's too full, it's going to pull off and it's going to cause leakage. Change the pouching system at least four times, at least uh, once in four days. You, the patient can take bath, bath with, a, uh, with the pouch on it or um, without it. Now don't use baby wipes because baby wipes have got lanolin in it and that is going to uh, that is going to prevent sticking of the pouch, of the next pouch that you're going to apply. Now clean the peristomal skin only with water and allow the skin to dry properly before attaching another pouch. Now use the correct size of stoma. If you use it's too small, it's going to uh, constrict the stoma. If you use a pouch that's too big, it's going to leak. If you have leakage, you can use those barrier rings, those wafers which I've shown you, the, uh, the, the karaya paste and ostomy paste. Now living with an ostomy can create a lot of changes like I've said because it affects social functioning and negatively impact body image and sexual function and mood and other daily activities. So they have to adjust at work, they have to adjust and they can't travel, they don't know where to find a toilet. So exercise whether to do or not to do and self-management of the stoma is going to be difficult if they are old and have some other diseases like stroke and so on. So it's going to affect and then when you have a colostomy, the complications of it will require hospitalization, operation, and then that will entail into some economic impact. Now, this is some kind of irrigation which patients which they can regulate their bowel habit by putting an enema and empty their bowels and empty the bowels so that by they can predict and not rush to the toilet every time. This is usually done for sigmoid and uh, sigmoid and descending colostomies which are very common so that they had, don't have to rush to the toilet every time they put in an enema and then then that can stop the bowel movement for some time around 24 to 48 hours so holistic care now we have to care not only for the stoma but also for the patient because it's going to give so much of odor now how to limit the odor tell them not to eat certain foods that will cause so much of odor like cheese and beans and then they can add some mouthwash or some colostomy deodorants into their pouch how to control gas tell them not to eat chewing gum not to eat, drink water with straw so and diet and nutrition consume high fiber foods so that the effluent so that the effluent that comes out from the colon is much thick Eat foods that thicken the stool, banana is one, and ab avoid foods that loosen the stool. Now clothing they can wear, normal clothes, advise them not to wear tight clothing. They can take bath with the, with the pouch on or with the pouch off. And swimming, they can swim with pouches on if they feel comfortable. But some, most of them, it's difficult to conceal these colostomy bags within swimming suits, so they have to decide. Now traveling, tell them to take an extra pack of... Uh, of supplies, the pouch and those paste and whatnot, because you don't know, some emergency may happen and they cannot be um, looking, running helter skelter looking for these supplies. At work, tell them to keep dry towels in their pouch, in their car, in their workplace, in the locker, because some unplanned changes, suddenly they may develop a diarrhea. And when you, they have to do heavy work, tell them to seek help, because if they do heavy work, the intra-abdominal pressure is going to increase, and once that increases, the chances of developing a hernia is high. They can start exercising from at least a few, uh, six to eight weeks, start in the hospital, and gradually move on to um, uh, heavier exercises when they reach home. Now, sexual activity, this is something that is important because it's the, the morale of uh, colostomy patients is so low that uh, they have concerns about having intimate relationships. The ability to love, care, and be, to be intimate doesn't change, but they have a problem with expressing feelings. So... <coughs> Some tips can be that, that can be advised to them is that always empty the pouch first, roll up and secure the, the spout with tape. Men can wear a scarf 
and use small approach. Before I close, I would like to take you to this, the story of this man. Having a colostomy did not change his dream. This is Blake Bradford. This was, he had, uh, he, he had dreams of becoming a model. And then just before that, he was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis for which his whole colon had to be removed. Now this is the picture that uh, was taken immediately after he came out from hospital. But then he pursued and he adjusted his life and moved on. And you can see what has become of him. So I'm sure the sleepy girls would be awoken now seeing this picture. Yeah? Yeah. So he is determined to show people and society that having a stoma doesn't change who you are. You can Google his uh, pictures on the internet. His name is Blake Bradford. So these are my references. Thank you.